There are a lot of researchers involved in this particular project. And it's kind of interesting too, before we get into the, what you call scatter plot, before I begin looking at this, what was noticed by the researchers, in particular, there was an interview with the lead researcher, is they did a, a metabol uh, metabolomic uh, assay. And the most dramatically down-regulated nutrient out of all the nutrients in regard to aging was taurine. Now, what's interesting here is you begin to notice as an individual matures, and this happened among multiple species, the basically the taurine or serum taurine levels begin to decline. And that's when the discoveries began to arise. An interesting backstory too, the lead researcher, one of the lead researchers in reference to this project, uh, they started noticing taurine in regard to mitigating osteoporosis. And so they want to expand that scope into other realms of aging and the discoveries were quite spectacular. So let's get right, in. oh, by the way too, yes, we did about 10 months ago, we did a healthy aging, we'll call it anti-aging, in regard to taurine in reference to superoxide dismutase as pointed there. So you have a really kind of interesting uh, dichotomy between glycine and acetylcysteine with glutathione and taurine with sod. So it's really clear in the field in regard to these very powerful, healthy aging nutrients that some may refer to as anti-aging. So without further ado, let's get right into the study as follows. It goes, taurine may be a key to longer and healthier life. Taurine first came to, I don't want to mispronounce the name of the researcher, view during his previous research into osteoporosis, as we're reiterating. That uncovered taurine's role in building bone around the same time. Other researchers would find that taurine levels correlated with immune function, obesity, and nervous system function, i.e., for example, the research from 10 months ago that we just highlighted. We realized that if taurine, quoting, is regulating all these processes that decline with age, maybe taurine levels in the bloodstream affect overall health and lifespan, quoting the lead researcher. To learn, one of the lead researchers, to learn how taurine impacted health, the lead researcher brought into other aging researchers who investigated the effect of taurine supplementation on health and lifespan in several species. Now I wanna skip ahead a little bit. And I wanna reiterate, when they did a metabol metabolomic analysis, Taurine was the most, one of the most dramatically down-regulated nutrients that they discovered to proceed. The experts measured various health parameters in mice. This is the animal model. And there's also human observations too, we'll get into a second. It found that at age two, equivalent to 16 human years, animals supplemented with taurine for one year were healthier in almost every way than their untreated counterparts. The researchers found that taurine suppressed age-associated weight gain in female mice, animal study, even menopausal mice, interesting, increased energy expenditure, increased bone mass, improved muscle endurance and strength, reduced depression-like and anxious behaviors, reduced insulin resistance, promoted younger-looking immune system, among other health benefits. Not only, quoting, not only did we find that animals lived longer we also found that they're living healthier lives. And as a premise, it's really important, a lot of research, one thing about extending lifespan, another about extending healthy years to go along with that lifespan increase. At a cellular level, taurine improved many functions that usually decline with age. The supplement decreased the number of zombie cells. Remember we did this apoptosis in regard to quercetin a little earlier too, as well. Old cells that should die, but instead linger and release harmful substances. A lot of tools in the tool chest. Increased survival after telomerase deficiency increased the number of stem cells present in some tissue, which can help tissues heal after injury. Improved the performance of mitochondria, reduced DNA damage, and improved the cell's ability to sense nutrients, which is actually kind of cool, because you know in some aspects in reference to obesity discovering that's dulling the body's ability to sense a lot of these nutrients. So light bulbs, publisher bias, but still just the same. Now let's get into the full study as well. Lower circulating taurine and metabolic metabolites in humans are associated with multiple age associated pathologies. Now I put the chart up there as well so you can draw uh, a visual reference as I read along to you. To determine whether blood levels of taurine pathway metabolites, taurine, hypotaurine, 
Hypertorin as a metabolite. I know the mental uh, ability to want to gravitate towards hypo being low, but in this case, hypotorin is a metabolite and acetylatorine are associated with health variables in humans. Quoting, obviously, we performed an association analysis of circulating taurine metabolite levels with over 50 clinical risk factors in 11,966 subjects of the EPIC Norfolk study. And that's part of why they're bringing up the study too, because there's redundancy. Uh, and it's important to have redundancy because we happen to be plagued by what's called p-hacking in a lot of studies. P-hacking for statisticians out there know exactly what I'm talking about. We found that higher blood taurine and hypotorine, taurine, taurine, hypotorine <laughs> levels were associated with lower body mass index, BMI, and waist to hip ratio, as well as less abdominal obesity. Hence the figures. As a figure, no pun intended. Higher levels of taurine metabolites were associated with lower prevalence of type 2 diabetes and lower glucose levels. Also, higher taurine and hypotaurine, again, not low, but it's a metabolite, were associated with lower levels of inflammation marker C-reactive protein for liver and lipid-related traits, such as aspartate aminotransferase and blood cholesterol. Quoting, we found positive associations with taurine levels, but negative associations with those of its precursor hypertorine, hypotorine. Blood cell parameters like hemoglobin, platelets, and white blood cell count correlated positively with the three taurine metabolites. Association does not establish causation, first rule, I would say, of science, besides bias and confounding. But these results are consistent with taurine deficiency contributing to human aging. Again, taurine deficiency, remember the first chart we brought up, as it begins to go down, these aging, age-related uh, abnormalities, or I should say, well, you know, as people mature, uh, tend to become more prevalent in association with lower taurine levels. The second Moving ahead, the second study tested if taurine levels would respond to an intervention known to improve health exercise. This part is real interesting. The researchers measured taurine levels before and after a variety of male athletes and sedentary individuals finished a strenuous cycling workout and found a significant increase in taurine among all groups of athletes, sprinters, endurance runners, and natural bodybuilders, and sedentary individuals. So we're talking about the increase. We're not talking about the natural base level. We're just talking about how, regardless of whom the individual is or what the background was physically, it rose just the same. No matter the individual, all had increased taurine levels after exercise, which suggests that some of the health benefits of exercise may come from an increase in taurine. Now we move to the conclusion. Only randomized clinical trial and people determine if taurine truly has health benefits. Add in a lead researcher. Taurine trials are currently underway for obesity, but none are designed to measure a wide range of health parameters, obviously. Other potential anti-aging drugs, including metformin, rapamycin, and NAD analogs are being considered for testing in clinical trials. Quoting, I think taurine should be considered, and it has some advantages. Taurine is naturally produced in our bodies. It can be obtained naturally in the diet. It has no known toxic effects. Although it's rarely used in concentrations uh, above that, and it can be boosted by exercise. Taurine abundance goes down with age. First chart. So restoring taurine to a youthful level in old age may be a promising anti-aging strategy. Again, stressing the lead researcher's request for randomized quality trials in humans to just to validate the information. The correlation is really strong, but it emphasized correlation does not mean causation, and they would like to see, and they have probably a lot of confidence, that these trials will pan out to support their hypothesis. So that is really quite interesting. So there's a lot of tools that we're going through time, moving forward, that are in our arsenal now. From taurine to n cysteine to glycine. When talking about zombie cells, remember we did the research in reference to uh, Kirchhoff before as far as a cleaning house per se. And that's just the beginning of what is available to us to really help promote healthy aging as well as mitigating or reducing the possible, uh, how would you say, incursion of disease or other ailments. The tools are out there. It's a lot less expensive and a lot less painful 
in order to do an ounce of prevention. And these tools here may provide that prevention as we move forward. So gratitude to the researchers. Again, huge study like the Norfolk study in regard to over 50 clinical trials in regard to over 11,000 participants, close to 12,000. And yet they're yielding that strong correlation. Gratitude. I am humbled you watch and look forward to see you all once again next week. See you all then. Bye-bye.